This is a Fluke 101 multimeter. It's the cheapest Fluke multimeter you can get, as far as I'm aware. It's available on Amazon in the UK for £79. I know you can certainly get it cheaper than that. And I actually got this one from eBay for about £35. And the reason it was that cheap is because this is the Chinese version. Here's the box. And the only difference, as far as I'm aware, is that the word fluke is in Chinese. And the, the reason I got this is because there's a certain prestige to owning a fluke multimeter. They're just hmm. the brand name in multimeters. And I fancied buying one, but I was so, I was too cheap to get the, the original. I thought I'd get the, um, the Chinese one for, for less money. But then I thought, well, you want it safe, Luke, don't you? That's, that's why you're getting it. So I thought I would try to make some sort of uh, label to put in here so that it looks original. Also, the continuity buzzer isn't really very good. And I don't know whether it's just this one. Um, I've seen some reviews of it and it, it sounds fine in those, but this, this one's got a bit buzzy. So I'm wondering whether the the speaker is misaligned or something's not right anyway. So um, let's, let's demonstrate that. The leads for this attach at the bottom, there's only two because it doesn't measure current. It's that basic. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. It kind of get in the way. Um, but if we turn it to continuity. Well, first of all, it's not great because It misses a lot of the time, but when it does sound, I don't know if you can tell, but that sounds scratchy. It doesn't sound right to me. Maybe this is a knockoff. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to open it up and have a look. It's powered by two AAA batteries. You can easily access them with that half turn thumb screw. It's got a calibration seal. And just four Phillips screws holding it together. It's not easy to get apart. Right, so under this clear plastic is the uh, silkscreen printed text. So I should be able to make a label of some description to, to go over there. But I do want to look at this buzzer, so I'm going to have to disassemble further. Those are tight. Yeah, they've got little locking washers on them. This is the calibration seal, which is a hole leading to these test points. And that is all there is to it. But here is our buzzer. So I actually don't think there's a lot I can do with this. I mean, I could desolder it, but it's a new meter and I don't really want to do that. There's nothing rattling around or loose, so maybe that's just how it's meant to sound. Anyway, I'm going to stop worrying about that and concentrate instead on this. Right, I've measured this area, the yellow part, as 22.5 by 4.5 millimeters. So I'm going to start off by defining the size. I actually decided it was 23 millimeters in the end by 4.4. And there it is, that small. Uh, so let's color that yellow. It doesn't have to be the right yellow because I'm going to try to do this with my Cricut Maker die cutter. 
and so the colors won't matter for that because I'll just change it to black and white. So I'm going to place my logo. Let's see if I can download an SVG because that would be that would be better. Okay, I managed to find an SVG. It doesn't look too bad. I wonder if it's accurate. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to change this to a different color. I'm going to make this black. And then I'm going to punch this out. Uh, minus front. There we go. So that's going to be our cutout file. So I'm going to save this as a copy. I'm going to save it as an SVG. I will call it Luke Logo. Now I'm going to go to Cricut Design Space. Right, I have some vinyl here that looks to be the perfect colour. It's just an off cut from something else. So I'm going to cut it out of a little area in the corner and see whether it manages to cut out those fine details. Maybe it did. That doesn't look too bad. Right, to start with, I've put a little bit of black self-adhesive vinyl over the old logo. And I'm going to peel this off and stick it over the top and hopefully it will look okay. It looks alright at the moment. I'm lucky that the, all the letters of fluke cut out in one go rather than having a hole like for a P or an R. Okay, I've slightly bent the the F. Doesn't look too bad, does it? I might even so happy with that. Though I don't think this is going to work. This is a picture of the original. You can see there's quite a big gap on the left, but before the before the F. And here's my version. And I think when I put it together, it's going to look terrible. But I don't think I could have made those letters a lot smaller. Well, let's have a look. Do you know what? I think that looks okay. I think a keen eye would tell it wasn't original, but I mean, I'm going to be the only one looking at it, let's be honest. If you just wind these back and let them drop into the slot, it stops, stops it cutting a new thread. Not that I'm going to take this apart very often. All right. Okay. There we go, all back together. And no one would ever know I was a cheapskate and bought the cheap Chinese version. I'll just check the continuity buzzer. It's probably no different. I didn't do anything after all. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I've put them in wonky. It doesn't like that. Oh, it's going to need to come apart again. All right, I've loosened these screws off a bit. So I think I'm going to put the test leads in 
so they're centered and then screw it up. Then hopefully they'll stay in place. Yep, those are nicely centered now. Okay, weirdly, the buzzer now sounds a lot better. I don't know what I did to it, but... That is definitely sounding less buzzy than it was before. It's a clearer tone. I seem to have inadvertently fixed that problem too, so that is a definite win. So yeah, that is... Um, Fairly pointless project to do that, but I'm strangely satisfied with it and fixing the buzzer, a definite bonus.